Hey, this is Zero at ReviewZone HD, and I'm bringing you guys a review for Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, which originally released in October of 2011. It's a spin off of the original Dead Rising 2 that feels almost like an expansion more than an all new game. You do lead Frank West into battle on here, which was the main character from the original Dead Rising, and he adds the photography mechanic back to the game. They did change the plot, rearranged a few characters, added a small new area called the Uranus Zone, added around 15 new combo weapons, but it essentially all boils down to a pretty similar game with a few upgrades and one additional game mode which I'll come back to in a moment. The review scores for this version were all over the place with Game Informer giving it a 9.5 which is just plain crazy, GameSpot gave it a 7 and Eurogamer gave it a 6. I did play the original Dead Rising and I got bored with it pretty quickly, I skipped over the sequel and I purchased this off the record version about 8 months ago, spent very little time with it back when I first bought it and then I buried it in my desk. And I have a hard time getting into these titles because they get very repetitive very quickly. My biggest problem with this series is that once I'm actually playing through the game it just doesn't evolve and keep my interest. The level up system is very generic and gives no control to the player to allow you to shape your character how you see fit other than just giving them some new clothes. It's all done automatically. I'm not saying they need to shift towards making this a role playing game but it would be nice to have a little bit of control over your stats and and give you a little more reason to look forward to leveling up. It would certainly give more purpose behind killing thousands of zombies on here. Graphically, the environment looks phenomenal. It's the best design mall that I've seen in any game, and overall, this title looks a lot better than the first Dead Rising title. The stores are all bright and colorful, well put together with a great layout. The way the areas connect to one another are seamless and feel authentic, and it seems as if this could mimic a real-life mall somewhere out there. The graphics in the mall itself really holds this game and this series as a whole together. The character animations such as attacking and just general movement look good, but they just don't feel very fluid or crisp when you're actually controlling what's going on. There's usually a slight delay on the reaction and it feels a bit clunky when you're interacting with enemies or objects. As far as the sound goes, the sound effects were great, but the music, or lack of music, really made the game feel stale at times. If I'm going to be slicing, bashing, hacking, kicking, smacking, and punching zombies for hours on end, it would have been nice to have some decent tunes to listen to to help pass the time by, and this very well could be the game's weakest feature. One thing that did keep me motivated while playing was the crazy characters that you're going to meet during the missions, which were lively enough that they could fill the cast for a Borderlands title. The story was pretty good and the voiceovers and dialogue were up to the task of dishing out a pretty good tale worth listening to. And I actually did end up watching most of the cutscenes, which I don't always do, especially for a game like this. So again, the storytelling was pretty good. The boss battles, which are supposed to be the highlights that stand out to help break up the monotony, of mindlessly killing zombies were a bit of a disappointment. They lean more towards the cheap end of the scale more than the challenging side, with more of a focus on what weapons you bring to the battle more than the actual fight itself. Timing, dodging, learning patterns, skill, all that pretty much goes out the window in most of the major fights. During some of the more difficult boss battles, I would usually succeed in luring the enemy to get stuck on some object and then smack them around while they're running in place. I guess when you're programming zombies to wander around aimlessly, it may be a bit too much to ask to program some actual decent AI here and there to put up a challenging fight. But even if the boss battles were more challenging and less cheap, I'm not so sure your character would be agile enough to handle them. As far as the trophies go, according to a trophy guide that I read for this title, the platinum for this one is a lot easier to obtain than the original Dead Rising 2, and also requires a lot less grinding. The estimated time required to platinum this title is around 25 to 40 hours, whereas the original Dead Rising 2 was estimated between 50 to 60 hours. One story playthrough will take you roughly around 8 hours to complete, and there is also a sandbox mode that is essentially a free roam without having to worry about the case files ticking down as you're playing. If you played the original Dead Rising or Dead Rising 2, you should know exactly what you're getting into as the series really hasn't seen any groundbreaking changes between the three titles. Off the Record did address one of the biggest complaints from the previous game by adding checkpoints that allow you to reset close to where you just bit the dust, which I was very thankful for in a few instances during my playthrough. If you do manage to miss the time quota for a very important story mission and want to restart your entire playthrough over again, you're able to bring your leveled up character into the new game. You can also begin sandbox mode at any time that features some challenges and ways for you to level up and gain some extra cash for the main story mode. The challenges are pretty cut and dry and most likely was just an easy way to extend the gameplay and toss in a few different trophies. Now I personally do not like games that use timers to increase the difficulty, so while I am 
thankful they included the sandbox mode that allows you to freely play around inside the mall. It really won't hold most gamers attention including my own for very long. But the fact that you can restart a new game over with your previous leveled up character does offset the whole running on a timer situation so getting that dreaded main story mission failure game over is a lot less painful. Now, I would highly recommend this title for a rental especially if you didn't play either of the previous two games. If you did play either of the first two titles and you got bored with them there's not going to be anything new here that's going to change your thoughts on this series. It's a fun game at times, it provides a nice way to wind down at the end of a long day but it's a pretty average game at best. Anyways this is Zero at Reviews on HD and thanks for stopping by.